Hello, and welcome along to Raycon TV. Today, we're gonna to be talking about something every Soundy has come across, the humble whip antenna. Every transmitter and receiver you buy has got some form of antenna. Um, with the case of the plug-on, uh, the antenna is actually formed by the microphone and the body of the transmitter itself. So you can't visibly see it. All our other transmitters are generally equipped with a whip antenna. Now, whip antennas come in various different lengths. So here I've just got a selection of um, Wizicom antennas. SMA, of course, for the receiver, and a single pin Limo in the case of uh, Wizicom for the transmitter. Now, there's no difference electrically in the antennas at all. They're all of a certain length and varying lengths, and that's to do with the frequency. The whip antenna is a quarter of a wavelength long. And as our frequency increases, the required length of our antenna for optimum efficiency is getting smaller. Here, in the case of the DME antenna, it's very short indeed. Very convenient for the talent, of course, when you're trying to hide a transmitter. So for optimum efficiency, the antenna selected must be for the correct frequency or block in use. Now the whip antenna is a great all-rounder, but it can give us problems. When we're using a slot receiver in our bag, for example, we may have a transmitter in close proximity to it, and that can give us issues. The answer to the interference problems there is to try and separate that transmitter and receiver as much as possible. Another solution, of course, is to just use an external antenna, and I'll come on to that in a minute. So, replacement Wizicom antennas are available, and because Electrosonics uses an SMA on both their transmitter and their receiver, they do two replacement antennas, and they sort of come as this DIY kit. Um, this unit here is the AMMJ, J is for joint, and it's got quite a convenient joint in it, which can be useful in our bag if we want to put a lid on the bag or whatever for storage, we can just fold the antenna out of the way without actually bending the element at all. And of course, the ordinary AMM, same antenna, no joint. And the AMM antennas come with a cutting chart. We just lay the antenna on the supplied data sheet and cut it to the appropriate length in this chart here. And there's a frequency list. There's nothing stopping you using the Electrosonics antenna with uh, any transmitter or receiver that uses uh, an SMA. Okay, when cutting it, don't be tempted to use your little electronics cutters. Uh, this wire inside the antenna is actually steel. You want something quite substantial that's gonna be able to cut through that neatly and cleanly. The kit also comes with um, a set of colored caps uh, to indicate the frequency band in use. Um, to be honest, most people just go with black. If we wish some better performance, from our bag setup, then something to consider is an external antenna. Something like the Betso bow tie. As you can see, it's a, a rather unusual bow tie shape. Um, the way it's designed is it looks like many different lengths of antenna. So this has a bandwidth of between 470 and 700 megahertz, and it actually has inbuilt in the connector housing a 700 megahertz low pass filter. We can't really use any frequencies above 700 megahertz anymore, so that prevents mobile phone transmitter or something actually overloading the front end of your receiver. So it's a great benefit from that. Also, it allows you to mount your receiving antenna outside of the bag. It's gonna have better coverage, and also keep it away from that link transmitter if you've got it in your bag. A great upgrade uses a BNC connector, so you will need to ensure you get the right lead to go from BNC to whatever your receiver's fitted with, and in most cases, SMA. Don't forget, click like, subscribe, and click that notification bell for further content. Thanks for watching.